The stock market is giving us a second chance on the best stocks of 2021 and we're loading up. In this video, we'll review the 2021 stock market portfolio already beating the market by 23%. Then I'm going to reveal the three stocks I'm buying in April. We're talking best stocks to buy now today on Let's Talk Money. Hey Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue here with the Let's Talk Money channel. I want to send a special shout out to all you out there in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Nation, I gotta say, I am excited for this April stocks video. You know, stocks we added from the energy and financial sectors back in October have been some of our top performers. Shares of Diamondback Energy are up 150%. Shares of Citigroup up 66%. I still like the two sectors for the best themes of the year, but last month they were looking a little expensive. I just wish we had added more before that surge in prices. Mr. Market must have heard my prayers and we're getting a second chance on these stocks. Shares of energy stocks are down 8.5% since mid-March and the financials are down 4%. It could be but a temporary pause in the run on these sectors and I'm taking advantage of it to buy three stocks for our portfolio. In this video, I'll review the 2021 Bowtie Nation portfolio on stock card, the winners, the losers, and where it's going. I'm then going to reveal those three stocks that I'm buying this month for that second chance. And I'll be putting all three of these stocks into our 2021 Bowtie Nation portfolio on the platform. Now the portfolio has jumped over the last few months up 29% and beating the market by 22% over that time. I'll leave a link to stock card in the description below. Look for the Bowtie Nation portfolio on the platform and click the bell icon to get notified whenever I buy or sell a stock from the portfolio even before these videos. As a special bonus though, I've negotiated an exclusive discount for everyone out there in the community. Use the promo code BOWTIENATION, all one word in lowercase, for an exclusive discount beyond the free trial. Our best returns so far have been those stocks in the energy and the financial sectors. Late last year, I highlighted how the economic recovery would mean a rebound in oil prices and how rising interest rates would make the banks more profitable. I took profits a little too early here in Devon Energy, but we're still holding Diamondback, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo. I added shares of MCOR Group, ticker EME, ahead of the plans for an infrastructure bill this year, and the shares have jumped 53%. Lyft was another one where I took profits way too soon, but it's hard to argue with a 42% return in just a few weeks. Shares of Anthem, ticker ANTM here, and CVS Health, ticker CVS, have done really well. They haven't beaten the market as much as I had hoped, but I still like that healthcare theme for the year. And here we added Weight Watchers and Dick's Sporting Goods on that reopening theme. And Weight Watchers is 30% higher here. I added DKS just last month, so I'm still hopeful that that's going to regain some of the momentum. Despite weakness in other stocks of the utility sector, our picks in Renewable Energy Group, ticker REGI, and First Energy, ticker FE, have done really well with returns of 30 and 22% since adding them late last year. First Energy still has some great value left, and I think REGI can benefit from any renewable plans over the next few years. Our semiconductor stock here, United Microelectronics, ticker UMC, hasn't done as well, but I think this one, really that whole semiconductor story, just needs time to run. Then of course there's the underperformers. You know, Madison Square Garden, ticker MSGS, and Cinemark, ticker CNK, were just part of the reopening trade added last month, and they got caught in that recent sell-off, but I still think these can do really well over this summer. Zoetis, ticker ZTS, was up as much as 10% before falling recently, and this might just be more of a longer-term story rather than that short-term bump that I had hoped for, but it's a solid business in a growing market. Now, Clorox has fallen with the rest of the consumer staples plays, but it pays a 2.3% dividend while we wait. For these three stocks I'm buying in April, I'm going back to those themes in energy and financial stocks. The price of crude oil was down 15% last week on renewed lockdowns in Europe and fears that oil demand would weaken with another wave of the virus. That alone took shares of energy stocks down more than 10% from their peak. Now, the sell-off in banks and other financial stocks wasn't quite as bad, but a drop in interest rates over the last week has taken some of the momentum out of that sector. Now, the narrative for both of these sectors, that economic recovery, is still very much intact. The U.S. is vaccinating upwards of 3 million people a day and could hit 50% of the population by the end of April. Along with about a quarter of the population that has some level of immunity from a prior infection, that's going to mean the daily new cases plunge and people start getting out of their house for more things. Now, trillions of dollars in stimulus money and all that pent-up demand from consumers, that's just going to continue to push interest rates higher. 
bank profitability is going to surge on that, especially as they move more of those loan loss reserves back into earnings like that we've talked about here on the channel. Nation, it is not going to be long before reopening is the word on everyone's lips again. The summer driving season is coming, travelers through TSA checkpoints are making new highs, all this is going to drive oil prices back up, and I'm getting the portfolio ready with new positions in energy stocks and the financials. First in our April stock buys is the world's largest independent refiner, Valero Energy, ticker VLO. Valero has more than 2.6 million barrels a day of refining capacity, along with its own terminals and pipelines in key centers. The company also has a strong business in renewables as the world's second largest renewable diesel producer and corn ethanol producer. Valero's focus around the Gulf Coast and mid-continent gives it a supply advantage on lower feedstock costs, and the entire refining industry has some great headwinds going into the summer. Gas prices hit an average of $2.88 last week, up nearly a third from last year, and it's lifting profits for the refiners. The profit margin between the price of gasoline and crude oil recently hit its highest in three years at $24 a barrel. Now, since gas prices tend to rise into the summer, that could mean even higher profits to come. Gasoline inventories are lower than normal after February's deep freeze in Texas, so refiners like Valero should be ramping up their production and could report blowout numbers for this year. Shares here pay a 5.6% dividend yield, the highest among refiners, and as we see that cash flow improve this year, I'm expecting a return of the billion dollar plus share buyback program later this year. Now, earnings are expected to jump to $1.37 per share this year and then 250% higher next year from a loss of $3.12 last year. So this is definitely a turnaround story. Our next April stock is also in the energy theme with independent oil producer Marathon Oil Corporation, ticker MRO. Now, Marathon has sold off almost all its conventional oil plays and focused on the shale plays over the last five years, mostly in the Bakken and the Eagle Ford basins. It produces about 383,000 barrels a day and reports proved reserves of 972 million barrels. Now that focus on shale means that extraction costs are a little higher than those traditional fields and its depletion is quite a bit faster, but it also means the stock should rebound stronger with higher oil prices. The management delivered a 20% cut to production costs last year and says the company is break even with oil as low as $35 a barrel. They're targeting a total 30% cost reduction, so still have a little ways to go this year. Marathon is guiding to a billion dollars in free cash flow this year, four times the cash flow produced last year. That should help it meet its target of $500 million in debt reduction and shore up the balance sheet, which actually isn't too bad already. The debt to equity ratio is a little higher at 0.51 times, but still lower than the industry average. The company is expected to report earnings of 13 cents per share this year after a loss of $1.16 a share in 2020 and produce 60% annual earnings growth through 2024. Now the dividend was cut from 5 cents a share to 3 cents last year to protect that cash flow, so the return of cash flow and earnings this year, I think they can jump it back up later on in the year for a 2% dividend yield and a strong boost to investor sentiment. This next April stock pick is in the financials, Citizens Financial Group, ticker CFG. Now Citizens is really a regional bank in name only with more than a thousand branches, 183 billion in assets and customers in every state. It's evenly split between consumer lending and commercial banking, both of which should do really well this year. And all you in the Bowtie Nation, you know how important those loan loss reserves are for the banks this year. All that money that banks took off their profits to protect against the recession that never came, that could mean big profits this year. Citizens took a $1.73 per share hit to earnings last year on its reserves increase. So imagine just bringing most of that back. Earnings are expected at $3.82 a share this year, an increase of 72% from last year, and I think it gets above $4 a share of earnings on those loan loss reserves. Revenue and loan growth increased 6% last year, while deposits were up 13%. And not only is that solid revenue growth, but the fact that deposits jumped twice the amount as loans tells me the bank was just being super conservative with its lending and has an opportunity this year to make more loans on higher profitability. Shares pay a 3.7% dividend yield, and even through last year, Citizens was able to increase the dividend, producing a 34% annualized increase over the last three years. Shares trade for just 0.87 times book value, making this one of the least expensive banks I follow. Click on the video to the right for the five streaming stocks to buy right now. Five stocks to take advantage of that theme. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.